So, as we can see here, I have a couple of different cameras set up. I'll be trying to look at this camera most of the time, but I'll occasionally look back over here at the computer, look at chat, see who's here hanging out with me today. But we have the main parts of the game set up. We have our little game board with our two meters, our psychic scale, and our danger meter. Now the danger meter is critical because when we roll the die, we have to meter beat that number for the roll for certain scenarios. Uh, we also, the psychic scale, so some card you draw might say, if your psychic meter is above this level, you could draw this card, see even more. Some of those cards we've drawn and seen are some of these photo picture or cards. So you might have a psychic vision of something going on in the house. So these are ones we found previously, so you get to hang on to them. Kind of this creaking door that's opening, the light streaming through. This looks almost like a flooded bathroom of some sort. And then possibly a safe. Along the way, we also found a few items, used a few items. So we started into the mansion with our trusty pocket knife and a bottle of water. We had to use the water up. So I do have it up here under Chapter 2 Goal. Because we use it in Chapter 2, I just want to show off that we did... Chapter one goal was get inside the, the house. We did find a couple of cards down that chapter. Chapter two, find access to the basement, which we did without too much trouble. But we did use that water during that. We had other couple of cards that aren't necessarily critical items, but they do say hold on to these cards. So you might occasionally have a card that says, if you found this clue, and it references the, the number on the clue card, then this. So I've set those aside just in case they're referenced. Off to the side, uh, we won't be needing the cards from the previous chapter um, beyond what I've set aside here. But every chapter does have a stack of cards about that thick. I've put the cover of the book or game per se cover card on top so we haven't started reading any of it yet. And our clue deck for the chapter. Of course, we will not get to see everything in either stack because of the choices we make. Some good, some bad, but we will see what happens. Hopefully this is sounding good enough. Okay, if I talk over here, not. it seems to be loud enough. Check in my levels, because I want to make sure y'all get to hear the whole story. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, Facebook, I talked about I'd be playing today. And the key thing I said is I would be attempting dramatic readings of these cards and probably some bad choices. So, I will be reading every single card, hopefully with a little bit of pitch mod modulation and to bring excitement to the story. But, of course, that is not my day job, so I will mess it up. I will not sound the best. So, let's have fun with it, though. That's the whole point of gaming, right? Have some fun. Bring some joy to everyone at the table. So, whether you're at the table sitting at a desk, sitting on your couch, in bed, wherever you're listening or watching this from, I hope you're relaxed and ready to continue into the house of danger. So we'll uncover and expose the top of the chapter. What I'm going to do, I will be putting that cover back on so we don't read any future cards that we're not supposed to see, just for the sake of not spoiling anything extra. So we're going to start with this card. What I'm going to do, take this so we don't see what's underneath it. I'm going to read this. I like to show off the picture a little bit. I'm going to switch your view. So now you can see the card I'm seeing, potentially see some of this fun artwork they do on these cards, see the clue numbers. You may attempt to read it on your own from the screen if you pause it, if you're watching later, but I will attempt to read it off to you as well. So that's what I'm going to do now. So, The Rescue, Chapter 3. You're still not sure what's really going on in this place. We're already freaked out by the creepy stuff you saw outside the Marsden house and the discovery of actual spirits from beyond the grave inside the house has only made you more on edge. You steal your nerves and remind yourself that you're not just an, an aspiring detective. You're a psychic investigator. You eat spirits from beyond the grave for breakfast. Not really. But the point is, you feel a surge of confidence. You can do this. At any rate, you've come way too far to turn back now. So all you can do is hope that the depths of this house hold some insight into the mysterious nightmares 
that have plagued you for weeks and drew you to this modern architecture house of horrors in the first place. But the elevator, which all your hopes rest on, is totally trashed. The last person to use it must have really hated elevators. Based on the scratch marks on the walls, they might have had sharp claws, too. A strange sensation now washes over you. Your head spins, you lose your balance, and you fall to your knees. Although you don't quite black out, you're overwhelmed by visions as your consciousness leaves your body and travels through the house's lower reaches on mind power alone. You drift downward through a meeting room full of huge shadowy figures and a laboratory stocked with equipment. So that was the full first card. It does say continue under the next story card. So the next card is going to have some more photo stuff on it. So keep this in mind as I'm reading. Your awareness projects deeper under the estate. You finally come to a jail cell. Your mind can't penetrate to see who is inside. But a wave of anguish emits from it like the heat from the sun. You sense that the person trapped inside is responsible for what you've, you have encountered so far and could help you with what you'll encounter next. Draw Clue Card 76 to discover your goal. So I will do that before continuing to read. So Clue Cards in this stack, they start at 58 and go on for this chapter. So it says 76. So, Clue Card 76. Chapter 3, Goal. Rescue the prisoner you have sensed from your psychic projection. So this card, as you can see in this other view, typically will go at the top of your game board for everyone playing to see. Now, to continue reading. Your mind joins your body again, as though swiftly snapping back into place. It takes you a moment to get your bearings. You're in your own body, in an elevator, in a spooky house, that you somewhat regret ever setting foot inside. You check the panel and find that all the buttons have been pried off except two. They might be for the only active basement levels. Of course, it's also possible that they're just the floors that whoever wrecked this elevator wants to lure you to. With a whoosh, the elevator doors briskly close. So, if we press the button for sub-basement 2, we go to story card 71. If you press the button for sub-basement 3, go to story card 78. So, now we need to choose which story card we go to next by deciding what we do for our next step. Simple as that. So we can decide if we want to go to press the button for sub basement two or sub basement three. Now, last time we were pretty methodical, worked through the rooms pretty easily, kind of step by step, took our risks, but in a in a very controlled way. But now, do we? kind of gung-ho, just go as fast as possible? Do we go one level down, or do we go two extra level, two levels to the third? Now, based on what we read for our psychic visions, it seems we did travel down pretty far. I'm inclined to, to want to go to basement level three. So, if you want otherwise, tell me now in chat, because I'll only do one. The other we won't get to see. So I'll give you all a moment to decide. So, basement level two or basement level three. Okay. 
Okay, since I'm hearing nothing against going to three, I'm going to choose based on level three and go from there. So that means we go to story card 78. Every story card has a number at the top corner. Kind of like I'm using this book cover card. I'm trying not to spoil anything. So I'm just going to shuffle, th not shuffle, but skim through until I find 78. So I'm tr doing everything I can not to read anything except that number now. Because we may need those other cards soon. Okay, so 78. Not a full card of writing, but there's probably something on the back. So let's see what happened. The elevator drops with a jerk and continues to sub-basement 3. The door opens up into a room with tables, holding funnels, glass beakers, test tubes, thermometers, and safety goggles. It looks like a biochemistry lab. It's a complete wreck, just like the elevator. So you can add biochemistry to the list of things the Vandal has a grudge against. There's a desk in the corner. Based on the pattern of stuff scattered on the floor, it appears someone was dragged away from it by force and then taken out a door and down a hall. Another door leads into a room where you can see large glass vats full of glowing blue liquid. Continue on back. Oh, and we got a nice photo of the smashed biochemistry set. So, if you follow the path of destruction, we can go down the hallway to our particular story card, or you can enter the room with glass vats of glowing blue liquid. So, Here's where, again, we choose and potentially diverge. Now, it may be more dangerous to go down the hall if someone was already dragged in that direction. But, I'm not sure it's ever been safe to go to vats of glowing liquid. Now, considering our psychic vision and the destruction of the elevator in here, we seem to be on the right path. So, do we continue down the hallway because we're potentially searching for whatever did this. Maybe they're the one trapped that we're rescuing, because we do have to rescue the prisoner. Maybe the one that was dragged out of here is now the prisoner. So, my inclination is to follow down the hallway, as I've never been prone to wander towards glowing liquids especially in a strange house, such as the House of Danger. So, unless you disagree, unless you have your own opinion on it, we're going to move forward with this. And I'm going to go down the hallway. So that means I need story card 86. We're going to do the same little thing. Search the numbers in the corner, find just the card we need. Don't look at anything else. I don't want to spoil it. I want to play this again at some point. Try to keep all these cards on screen for you. Because I know y'all enjoy looking at it yourself. So we found this card. Almost a full card to read again. Show you the back when it's time. As you look at the scuffs, broken objects, and smudges of blood, you're positive that someone has been dragged down this hallway. The trail ends inexplicably in the middle of the hall. Was the person picked up and carried the rest of the way? There are three doors here. You can hear that soft hum of machinery coming from behind a green metal door. A wooden door is partially open and looks like it leads to a break room. There is nothing but Silence coming from inside. The last door is closed tight, but the room behind it isn't anything close to quiet. In fact, you can hear the frenzied cries of very large animals. There's a window on the door that has been broken with cardboard taped over to cover it. 
So premonition. If you are a level three or higher on the psychic scale, we would draw clue 74. So I'm going to switch it to the other view so you can see our psychic scale real quick and show you where we're at. So each level has five steps in it. We're at step eight, which is only level two at this point. So because we are not level three, we don't get a clue. So our psychic abilities need help. So this is where decisions you make in the previous chapters can affect the future chapters because some decisions increase your psychic level, some lower it, and same thing with the danger level. So in this case, because we did not increase it enough in previous chapters, we are now too low to gain an extra clue. So with that, we'll move back to the cards and go from there. So now we have three choices instead of two. We can head for the machine room, which was just a hum of machines, nothing special. We could try the break room, which was silent, albeit the door was cracked open. Or there's the room full of screeching beasts. They had a broken window already, so they're either trying to hide something here. It could be quite dangerous. Now, unfortunately, in Chapter 1, we did run into some issues with... We can call it a beast. Um, an ape of some sort that decided our time was no more at the house. And we found one of the end chapter type cards that ended the game early and we stepped back and got to make a different decision. But then chapter two we also found another ape of sorts and we were safe when we found it. So it's hard to know if beasts are truly dangerous for us or not. If you do have an opinion, feel free to let us know. Now, I want to go back a step. I'm going to read a little bit of the clues on the front of what these doors look like. So the three doors, the machine room, had a green metal door. A wooden door is partially open, and it looks like it leads to a break room. And closed tight was the beast door. Now, for I could be completely wrong here, and you may disagree with me, but these clue cards we got from the previous chapter may finally be coming in handy. This may or may not relate, but we found this premonition card before. To me, this looks like a wooden door partially open. Maybe that indicates the right way to go. We had a vision of it at some point, potentially. It could, it could be a different door completely. But to me this says, I want to try this door. Wooden door, cracked open. I want to try it. Completely silent, maybe there's nothing there. But why not make use of our premonitions to some extent. So, let me know in the comments if you agree, disagree, what you think of that clue. If you thought maybe we already used that clue in some other way. But, I'm going to go with the break room. So that means I need to find story card 66. Okay, first off. Writing again, no picture yet. At first glance, this seems to be a perfectly ordinary office break room with a coffee machine, particle board tables, and uncomfortable plastic chairs. But on closer inspection, certain details seem off. 
an employee manual features a chimpanzee in casual business attire on the cover. And the workplace safety posters show chimps rather than humans lifting boxes and climbing ladders. There are two doors in this room, other than the one you came in. A closed one labeled water closet. Isn't that what bathrooms are sometimes called in England? And an open one that leads into a completely dark tunnel that seems to have been dug straight into the earth. Okay, so now we got our picture of this break room. Free action to take some coffee with you in a thermos you found. Draw clue 59. I don't see any reason not to take some coffee with this in the thermos. Unless this... I don't see a sign that says for employees only. Might as well. It's it's a free item. So we'll take that clue card with us. So we have our coffee now. Uh, and this coffee says the extra focus provided by a sudden boost of caffeine can give you a reroll on your next challenge. Discard to reroll a die. Roll. Okay. So that's something we can keep hold of. I'm going to put it to this side of the board over here to show that's something else we've gained. So now we can check out the water closet or head to the dark tunnel. So here's where something else comes into play. If you can kind of see over here, this is the one I feel more strongly about for the psychic visions than even this last one. This vision we had before. Hopefully y'all can see it well. Now, this to me looked like a flooded bathroom. You can kind of see the toilet down low the back of the toilet, toilet paper on the wall, but it looks like it's all completely flooded. Which, to me, feels like, of course, per the name of the game, house it's the house of danger. This seems like a dangerous decision. So, to me, I would want to avoid the bathroom or the water closet per our vision. Who knows if this vision is correct or not. So, unless I see or hear otherwise, I'm going to actually go to the dark tunnel and avoid the water closet. As to me, it would not be the smart decision. And this chimpanzee thing seems to somewhat align with what we've encountered in chapter one and two so far uh we've encountered at least one chimpanzee out around the grounds of the mansion near the stable and there was actually one that took us out and into the game early chapter two we found the other one that was in this basement in the basement before we got under the elevator so ultimately not too surprised maybe there were maybe that other room we didn't go into was full of chimps that are being uh, trained uh, would probably be the nicest way to put it to be employees but in this instance I'm going to avoid the water closet and head to the dark tunnel story card 87 maybe maybe not a good decision let me know in the comments if you would have done different and why so 87 it's pretty short condensed but it's going to have some clue card options you can't see more than a few feet in front of you as you walk down the tunnel. So when a man's voice calls out from the darkness, you almost jump out of your skin. Hey you! You freeze. What now? You're the new assist lab assistant, right? It's about time you got here. You have the briefcase? If you have clue 38, give it to the mysterious stranger by discarding it. And drawing clue 62. If you do not have clue 38, draw clue 82. So, like I said, we've set some clue cards set us uh, aside from the previous chapters. Um, I'm going to check their numbers 54, 42, 
27, 30, 39, 56. So we do not have the briefcase, briefcase clue. So we need to draw clue 82. Clue card 82 says, the man spits on the tunnel floor. Was it not clear that you were supposed to meet me here with the briefcase, he says. Raise danger meter by three and then finish the story card. So this card does not say to keep that card, so that's gonna to go to a discard pile, but we also raise the danger meter by three. So over here on the danger, danger meter, which is part of the main game board, on this danger meter, we ended the last chapter down at the bottom. When you raise it by three, you actually count the number of steps up. So we go one, two, three. So now the actual number is four. And then we continue on with this card. So I'll show you real quick. It is going to have a picture. The man rushes back down the tunnel in the direction he came from. His footsteps booming in the darkness. There's a door with iron bars built into the wall here. It looks like it could lead to some sort of cell. Or maybe a kennel. It's unlocked. If you follow the man down the tunnel. Story card. A. If you open the cell door to see what's inside story card B. Now, a couple of things here. We know we're looking for a prisoner that is behind a locked cell. But why would the man run away from us? We've been very cautious this round, um, that, or this chapter per se. We have not been brash about anything, checking extra beyond things. Um, we could, we're here, we could check the cell. Maybe it's a kennel. If it's a kennel, it may be full of chimps and not dogs, because we haven't seen any dogs yet in our playthrough. I'm kind of interested why he got upset that we didn't bring a briefcase. What would happen if we chase him? But if he was hiding, do we need to follow? I, well, you know what? We've, we've found items when we've checked different locations. So I'll make the slightly calmer decision not to go running and open the cell door. So there's card 62. Hopefully it's a good decision. Oh, it's only half a card to read. You slide open the bar door. It looks much more industrial than the other rooms you've been in. The door slides shut on its own. Clang! And you hear it lock behind you. You see some kind of gated structure down the hallway in front of you. And quickly press yourself against the wall when you realize that two figures are guarding it. There's also a desk on the side of the room that's out of the guard's line of sight. Premonition. If you're level 3 or higher on the psychic scale, draw clue 80. Um, again, as we talked about, we are not level 3 psychic. So that is another missed clue. So... If anything, this is a recommendation that in the first few chapters do not play too conservatively so you can increase your psychic skill as much as possible so you can see some of these clues on your own. Um, so if we try your luck with the guards, or we can sneak across the room to the desk. Um, well, again... We've been sneaking this whole time in this whole house. We're not supposed to be here, so I don't see why guards would be happy with seeing us. So to me, I would like to sneak straight up. To story card 63. You make it to the desk unnoticed. The only thing here is a fancy new computer. 
It's a shiny beige box underneath a monitor that glows with rows of green text and a blinking command prompt. If you can manage to break through the computer's security, you might find some useful information stored in its internal memory. Optional Challenge Search the computer for information. If you are level 3 or higher on the psychic scale, add a plus 1 to your roll in addition to any challenge booster card you would use. If we win, we get to draw a clue card. Lose, we raise the danger meter by 2. After the challenge, continue below. I'm not going to read the below until we decide on the challenge. Well, for one, we're here to experience the game. We have not rolled a challenge today yet. And we're potentially, uh, no guarantee, potentially halfway through the challenge. Um, and we do have our coffee card that would allow us to uh, basically discard and re-roll. If we do fail, danger meter is currently at a 4, um, so we need a 4 or higher to pass. 50-50 chance. I'm going to say go for it. So I'm going to roll the die. It's over here. I'll try to roll it onto this other 2. So because of that 2, I'm going to use the coffee, discard the coffee, and re-roll it. So we want to find something. And another 2. So that is a straight up failure even using up our coffee. So we did not do well today with that roll. So we raised the danger meter by 2. 1, 2. We did fail. So we do not get that clue. The one way out of here is down a hall to a gate, which is guarded by two chimps. So we're going to approach the two chimps. So thank you for the follow. Uh, looks like doesn't belong here. Well, everyone belongs here. So thank you for showing up. Thank you for the following. I appreciate it. I hope everyone feels welcome. I hope you feel like you belong here. So, though it's not your name, you do belong. So thank you. So we're in the middle of playing House of Danger, Chapter 3. We just failed this roll. So now we do have to approach the chimp guards. So, uh, the, the thing we attempted to not do a while ago, we're forced to do now. So, chimp guards, uh, story card 74. Hello, hey, yes. Is the, you're referring to Twitch chat or you? So, in a way, I'm playing it, um, but anyone in Twitch chat, of course, is welcome to help me make the decisions of this game. So I, I try to play games where either you can play along on your own or you can help me make the decisions as I play. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to read off the card. Most cards have a decision to make. And if you would like to help me decide, you could help me decide. Tell me in chat. So what we did, just did, this card right here didn't give us a choice. It just said you have to draw this next card. So I'm going to read off this card. At the bottom of it, it's going to have us, us do certain actions. So I'll read it. What does the danger to high do? Um, so basically, if it gets too dangerous, you have the potential of essentially losing. Um, it can reset itself, but you end up losing potential cards throughout the game. And so the higher your psychic scale is, which the danger meter can force you to lose stuff on that if you, lo if you go too high. Because once you max out, see how it has... Uh, let me sh uh, switch the view for you. So on this main board, we have the danger meter and a psychic scale. Currently here we have the numbers for the current danger. When you roll, you have to meet or beat the die. Once we get to the top, if a card has us roll, we fail and we increase it again. We actually reset it, but then lose on the psychic scale. And when we lose on that scale, we've been missing out on drawing cards that are clue cards because our psychic scale has been too low. So we've already actually missed out on about three different cards this chapter alone because we weren't high enough. 
Does that make sense? If you have any more questions about it, feel free to ask. So it, it's kind of a, a bit of pressure of luck because sometimes some of the roles you have a choice on, we do have a few item cards depending on the type of role we can add it. And so this next card is actually gonna have us roll again a specific way, which I'll explain how it works as I do it. But I hopefully, hopefully that all makes sense. We do have a couple items from before. We've had premonitions of kind of pictures in our mind of things that we've attempted to make decisions based off of. We have some weapons. We brought our pocket knife. We have a, a saber we picked up, which can help us on combats. And so this card that I just drew, I'm going to read it off, but it's going to have us actually do a combat type role. So the two guards are huge chimpanzees as tall as you are. They are walking upright, just like you are. They are wearing security guard uniforms, just like you are not. They notice this key difference, and they attack. So required challenge, battle the guards. So if you win, you get to turn over this card and continue reading. If you lose, you, rain, you raise the danger meter by four and try again. So this basically we're forced to keep fighting them until we beat it. So currently the danger level is at a four. So we need a four or more when we roll the die. Now fortunately because this is a physical battle we have both a pocket knife we could choose to add after we roll which would add a plus one or our saber which would add a plus two to the die. So what we'll do is we'll roll and decide if we need to add it. Uh, or get side as zero. Um, I'm not sure if, it, if what happens if side goes to zero, except just missing out on a lot of clues. Yeah, so it's more keeping the psychic scale high get gets you rewards for the most part. So so it's it's made so like the main way you would end the game is there are certain cards if you make bad choices that you could find it like the end of end of the story card essentially, but they always allow you to kind of step back one choice and keep trying, but by bringing us one of these scales and changing it. So you try to get to, through the whole story because there's five total chapters. They make it so you can actually play the whole game. Just it affects your t kind of end game score, how well you did. So we're gonna roll the die in a one. So anytime you roll a one, that's an automatic failure. So even if you had something to add to it, you can't, it wouldn't make a difference. So, thing is, we didn't actually just uh, say we were using one of the extra items, because if we had, it would have forced us to discard that item because it would destroy the card. So basically, we lost that challenge. When you lose, raise the danger meter by four. One, two, three, four. Right here. So now we're at the top. Now we need. We need a six, which is going to be very difficult to do because we have to roll the six or use our saber. Um, so we can either just kind of go with the attempt to do it, use our saber to guarantee plus two, so it's basically a 50 50 chance four more is going to guarantee one. But if we do it one more time, fail it this is going to lose us two on the psychic scale, drop this back down to a three. So it's kind of balanced in that way. It kind of keeps you in the game. You're just psychic scale has been dropping. Uh, so let me know, do you think I should use our saber to be able to add plus two to the die when we roll it? Would you use it? Would you save it? What would you do? So we're forced to continue fighting these chimps until we get a success. I'm going to 
gonna say I'm gonna use the saber and give us give us a slightly better chance. So I'm gonna use the saber. So the only risk here is if I roll a one, we lose that saber for good. Okay, so we rolled a five. That's a plus two. So that that's a pass. We keep the saber. We pass. We don't change this meter yet. Let's see what's on the back of the card. So once you defeat the chimpanzee guards, you find that the gate will only open with an electronic key card. If you have clue 28 or 77, you open the gate. If you do not have clue card 28 or 77, go to story card 88. So the clue cards we currently have, um, we have some from previous chapters and some from this chapter. Let's see what we have found so far. Um, so from the previous, we had 30, 39, 56, 54, 42, 27, and 2. So unfortunately, we do not have the clue card. We do not have the key card where we need. So we're going to have, we won't be able to open this apparently. So we're going to go to story card 88. Without that key card, you're trapped. You can't get past the gate, and you can't leave the detention center through the locked front door. Just as you're about to give up, you spot a hole in the ceiling tiles, mostly obscured by shadows in the corner of the room. So we're going to go through the hole in the ceiling by drawing clue 70. Let's see what happens. Clue 70. Okay, so the hole opens up into a vertical shaft with haphazardly placed handholds like a climbing wall. You found a secret passage. Required challenge. Ascend the shaft. So, uh, let's, we have to roll. This is not a fight, but it's just a general physical. We don't have any bonuses. So we just need a six or better. We got a four, so that is a fail. So when we lose, we raise the danger meter by two and try again. So this is gonna reset by going up one, two, because we did that right over here. That went one, two. Let me make sure in the book if how it rotates around. So if it reaches the top of the meter by exact count or more, you must stop and take a penalty. Move the second mover back two spaces, then reset the mover to the third. Over to the third to space. Okay, so we have to reset to that three, but we will lose two on the psychic, which we're not doing well. Um. If we lose that, we raise it, and we have to try again. So we're gonna have to get, now we just need three or more. Come on, three. Okay, so now we passed. Once we pass and win, lower the danger meter by one. Okay, so it's gonna drop by one and get clue 81. Clue 81. You've climbed 20 feet when the handholds suddenly recede into the wall and disappear. This isn't just any secret passage. It's a booby-trapped one. Think fast. Required challenge. Avoid falling. So, it's a challenge. We have to roll. Three or more. Come on. And that's a one auto fail. When you lose, raise the danger meter by two and try again. One, two. Try again. Come on. Another one. One, two, up. Try again. That time a three. Rolling tonight has not gone well for any of these challenges. 
where is James? He was here for chapter two, and whenever he had us roll, it was great the whole time, or for the most part. But we did a lot better than this, that's for sure. Um, so we're going to get clue 78. This house got a lot more dangerous this chapter. <laughs> And another challenge. You found a ledge, but getting onto it is going to take some serious agility. Require challenge. Get on the ledge quick. And we need a four or greater. Wait, no, we messed up. That last time we were only rolled a three, so we technically had failed that one too. Should have rolled again. And then would have passed. Then would have gotten this clue card. And now we can roll this one. That would have been really bad. That would have been a really bad screw up on my part. My apologies. Uh, but we do need a, f a f And again, I messed up. Because that loss at the three puts that five, so that was technically another lost one. Two. We still need to pass this other one. I'm really bad tonight. One that's an auto fail, reset. One, two, three more, come on. Two, three, there, uh, no, that's a fail. One, two, this is getting bad, fast. Five, there we go, that's a pass. Finally passed, how many fails did we get there? Okay, so now we need five or more. That's a one, that's a fail. When you fail, raise it by two, one, two, Need a five or more. Got a four, so the one, two, stop, reset. We're losing all of our psychic abilities. And there's a pass. Finally. Clue 73. You know what? We made a lot better decisions when James was joining me and playing with me. Clue card 73. There is a passageway carved into the stone wall here, but someone has piled up a bunch of rocks to block the entrance. Require challenge. Move all the rocks. And we need a three or better. That's a six. Thank you. Um, clue 79. Yeah. We're just all over the place. We may, may or may not ever get out of here. Halfway down the passage, you find a chimpanzee sitting at a desk. He's smoking cigarettes and watching TV. He looks angry. Required challenge. Fight the angry chimp. We need a three or greater. I'm going to use my pocket knife, which adds a plus one. We rolled a five. That's a six. We win. We keep our knife. At least we didn't lose when lower the danger meter by one. Oh, we, have we not been lowering them? Yeah, we've really been messing with ourselves here. We're supposed to be lowering the danger meter every time. I'm gonna backtrack us at least one time. Put us at the top, but we should have been lowering this danger meter by one every time they pass this. I said we haven't done that last step. Because this just got ridiculous. I messed up so many times here. Or you know what? Do this. We're going to go all the way back and just do redo all these rolls. So we need to start with the shaft. We were here, here, we filled at least once yeah we're up here this is going to be complete reset if you're watching on YouTube be ready I'm doing a lot of editing so you don't see where all these things messed up because it sucks so the hole opens up to a vertical shaft with the haphazardly placed handholds like a 
Climbing wall, you found a secret passageway. Requ a required challenge, ascend the shaft. And we need four. We got a five, so that's a pass. Clue card 81. You've climbed 20 feet when the handholds suddenly recede into the wall and disappear. This isn't just any secret passage. It's a booby-trapped one. Think fast. Required challenge. Avoid falling. Um, when we got that clue card, we should have dropped this by one, which we'll do now. We still need a four to pass. That was a two to fail up by two. Again, four, four, pass, drop by one. We get clue card 78. You found a ledge, but getting onto it is going to take some serious agility. And we need a four. Got a three, that's a fail. Raised by two. Try again, we need a five or more. That's a five, that's a pass. Lower danger by one. Clue card 73. There's a passageway carved into the stone wall here, but someone has piled up a bunch of rocks to block the entrance. Require challenge, move all the rocks. We need a four. We got a two. When you fell, raise by two, one, two. So now we need a five. That was a two. Raise it by two. Roll again. We need a six. That's a three. That's a fail. Go up. We're going to lose two on the psychic. Reset down here. Now we need three or more. That was a one. Terrible. One, two, up. Come on. That's a five. There we go. That's a pass. Lower by one. Clue card 79. Halfway down the passage, you find a chimpanzee sitting at a desk. He's smoking cigarettes and watching TV. He looks angry. Challenge required. Fight the angry chimp. Currently need a four or more. I'm going to use my pocket knife to add a plus one to whatever it rolls. So now we just need a three or more. That's a one. That means we lose the pocket knife for good. And we fail. Raise, but we made it by two. So now we need four more. Try this again. I'm going to use my saber, which adds a plus two. That's a one is a complete fill, and you lose the saber. Now we need five or more. That's another one. What is going on? Raise it by two. Now we need a six or more. That's a three. Obvious fail. Reset. Lose two here. Now we need three or more. That's a three. Finally passed. Ooh, that was terrible. Um, lower by one. Clue card 75. I feel like I would want to play this whole chapter again. Like the, That was the roll, worst dice rolling I've ever had in any game. Promise you. Clue card 75. You run past the chimp and right into a 10-foot guinea pig. It is adorable, and it can kill you. Attack it, fighting, sneak past it, dexterity, heave a table at its strength, climb over it, climb, or find another solution, perception. Required challenge, conquer the guinea pig. Choose the type of fight we're doing. We don't have any additive cards anymore, so it doesn't matter which one we do. Okay, well, we need a three or more. Six, fine, thank you, thank you. Uh, when lower the danger meter by two. Well, we're gonna lower it as far as possible. Draw clue 77. I think 77 is the key card that we've been missing the whole time that got us to this point again. Whew. Key card. You see an access key card on the floor. You grab it and run through the doors in front of you. Unsure of what is on the other side. Keep this item and go to story card 69. Nice. Story card 69 is short and sweet. You are now in a chamber with three prison cell doors. They're heavy iron things with small barred windows that make it difficult to see what might be inside. 
There's a ring of three keys hanging from a nail on the wall. If you try cell A, cell B, or cell C. Whew. Now, what do we remember from before? Well, I, I don't feel like we've been given any good clues to which of these three, so uh, either we go alphabetical or just because I am J Bird, I'll go with B for Bird. I'll go B for Bird. Because I see no reason not to. S story card 73. Cell B is empty. Search all you want. There's nothing here. So, cell A or C. Story card 77 or 85. Well, 77. Let's go alphabet alphabetical now since we could have done it to begin with. A. There's a sleeping figure in cell A. Curled up with his back toward you. You can wake up the prisoner and try talking to him. Attempt to subdue him before he gets the opportunity to attack you, or just leave. Choose one, then continue. If you try talking to the prisoner, draw a clue 65. If you attack the prisoner, proceed with the challenge on the back of this card. If you'd rather skip the whole thing and leave the cell, return to story card 69. Nice. Uh, let's get a clue card. Let's just try talking. Because why not? Because, well, if we have to fight. Challenge level is pretty low, at least. Uh, 65. Clue card 65. You patiently wait for the prisoner to awaken. When he does, you discover that he's one of the human-sized chimpanzees. The moment he sees you, he lunges at you, beats you back out the cell, and slams the door behind you. Raise the danger meter by two. Go to story card 69. Nice. Story card 69 is the three keys. So we're back to the one option. Cell C, 85. Someone sleeping on the cot in cell C, with a thin blanket pulled over their face. You can wake the prisoner up so you can talk to him, attack him before he can attack you, or just tiptoe out the cell. Choose one, then continue. If you try talking to the prisoner, draw a clue 67. If you attack the prisoner, proceed with the challenge on the back of this card. If you'd rather leave the cell, go to story card 69. Nice. Well, we know we need to rescue a prisoner that we sense from the psychic projections. This is the third of the three. Let's just talk to him. 67. You gently shake the prisoner by the shoulder. He flings the blanket from his face. It's an exhausted looking man who's obviously relieved that someone has finally come to rescue him. Thank you. I'm Professor Marsden, he says. Marsden, you ask? Are you related to Henry Marsden? Yes. This was the estate of my ancestor, General Marsden. But at the moment, we have more urgent things to discuss. Go to story card 90. Chapter 3, Goal Achieved. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Professor Marsden looks worried. You have to help me stop my former research assistant, he says. She's twisted our scientific research for evil. 
So she's responsible for all these chimps, you ask? Yes, he says. But there's something bigger afoot I'm talking about. The alien science. Marsden says he can provide all the answers you're looking for. But you should first make sure you're prepared to leave this section of the house behind. He can give you explicit directions to important locations if you think you might have missed anything. Story return. There are items in this chapter that will be useful later in the story. You can take a risk and go back for any you missed by following the choices below. If you go to the biochemistry lab, raise danger meter by three and go to story card X. If you crawl through an air duct to the conference room, raise danger meter by three and go to story card 65. Or if you go to the printing press room, raise the danger meter by three and go to story card Y. If you head to the generator room, raise danger meter by three and go to story card 72. Otherwise, you may advance to chapter four and keep all inventory items. Woof. Well, we rescued him at least um, at very detrimental odds. Now, we've been playing this game where we don't go back at all, which I think has potentially hurt us because we've been missing items, missing premonitions, but I th maybe it's too safe. But since we've been playing it this way, I am going to not go back at all. Because that was pretty freaking dangerous to begin with. Um, so I'm probably going to call the game at this point. Or call the chapter of the game at this point. So that was chapter 3 of Choose Your Own Adventure, House of Danger. When will I do chapter 4? I don't know yet. I will announce it at some point on my Instagram, Facebook. So be following me there. Jaybird underscore the word. I kind of show off what I'm playing. Talk about the games. If I'm doing previews, reviews, I kind of post about those. Post uh, Talk about when I post new videos to my YouTube. And just in general, hang out, talk about games, and try to spread joy, of course. <laughs>